Hello everyone, welcome along to a special episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust podcast. Before the Tottenham Hotspur away game, I was invited down to the training ground to record an interview with town goalkeeper Thomas Kaminsky. And here it is. Hope you enjoy it. Hello everyone, welcome along to a special episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust podcast. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be acutely aware that we've got a different set behind us for this podcast and that is because I've been invited down to the training ground where I'm joined by one of the signings of the season, players of the season no less, Thomas Kaminsky. Thomas, thanks for giving us some of your time, really appreciate that. Hope you're well. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for the uh, opportunity to uh, talk to you guys. You're more than welcome. Um, First of all, congratulations are in order. Uh, your first international cap against fellow uh, Luton player Chio um, f- in the Ireland game at the weekend. That must be a special feeling. Yeah, it was special. It was a bit unexpected. They they just told me to warm up. So I was like, is the goalkeeper struggling with something? But yeah, apparently it was planned before the game already. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. So you'd represented Belgium throughout the youth uh, ages hadn't you but this was your first sort of actual cap but you've been in many many camps so um to finally get that ca- you know that first that first appearance uh, was you was your family there uh nobody was there but it was actually actually a fun fact before because i was the player with the most selections but no appearances but now i uh, finally i got an appearance so uh, that record is passed on to another one again so uh no yeah it was good it was nice to have a yeah have a have an opportunity to to uh to step on the pitch obviously it's nice to play for your country as well yeah congratulations on that congratulations also because you were announced the february diamond supporters player of the month here i mean it's quite some competition uh, in our side at the moment for player of the month awards so for you to be off the competition just shows how well you played throughout february yeah i agree and i think some of the players have been outstanding and yeah we uh we try to work together as a team as well to get the best out of each other and yeah there's only one who can win it in a month but yeah i think like we always want to do well as a team that's the most important and also especially in this part of the season we have to pick up points we have to be there for each other and uh, it's going to be very 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 tough yeah, February was one of my sort of favourite months in a way because we went to St James's Park and had that incredible game. We went to Anfield and had another incredible game, you know, and and, and the results, the, they probably weren't what we deserved in terms of the performances. But just the way we played for Luton to go to these places and play like we did as a fan, it was just brilliant to watch. It must be brilliant to be involved in as well. Yeah, I think we, we had some good performances, which we were, like for example, in, in, in Newcastle, yeah, it was was an amazing atmosphere as well. Uh, we played fearless, which was was really good. Um, like you said, maybe the performances have been so so well, but we didn't really get what we deserved. But in some way or another, I think we will get what we deserve. Absolutely brilliant month. Let's go back a little bit. Obviously, you played the early part of your career in Belgium, and then a move to Blackburn Rovers in the Championship. How did that all come about? And did you did you see the Championship as a, like a, a stepping stone, or was it you know was it something that was um, just the next progression from the Belgian league? I think it was more as the next progression of the of the Belgian league because the Championship is a, is a tough league and. Yeah, compared to the to the Belgium Championship is a uh, Belgium League, so it's a bit different. Uh, the style of play is, is very much different. But yeah, I I learned so much in the Championship, and yeah, to get the opportunity to play for Blackburn was was on the right moment as well. Was it always a dream to play in English football? Yeah, always because when I was younger, I came on trial to uh, several English clubs, and yeah, for us, for us as as. As young players, it's always the dream to play in the best league of the world as well. And I think the championship is one of the hardest leagues in the, in the world as well. 
And that Blackburn side was a pretty good side. They, you know, they operated quite high up in the championship. There were times where you were even right at the very top of the championship under Thomason and even last season, cup run to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. So it, it was a really sort of progressive team. So it must have been an enjoyable one to be a part of. Yeah, definitely. I think we, we had some good moments there as well in, in Blackburn. Unfortunately, we, we fell short at, at, at two occasions, but yeah, it's, it's, it was part of the, of the game was part of the project there as well that they were trying to uh, long, like put more younger players in, in the team and uh, they did well and we could we could eventually sneak in in the in the playoffs but we fell short at the end um yeah it's it's a tough league as well to to be like yourselves you experienced it as well but we always struggled against Luton as well uh, to play here. Yeah, it's been it's been a good couple of years there. Yeah, we're kind of glad he did miss out on the playoffs because yeah. it made it a little bit easier for us to um, to win them last season. You mentioned that you struggled against Luton. Obviously, you've played against Luton a few times when you was with Blackburn. So you'll have played at Kenworth Road as an away fan. You obviously sorry as an away player. You're obviously now there as a home player. Just how important are the are the fans? How intimidating are they when you're an away player? Because obviously you're right in front of both goals with the Luton fans behind you. So I, I guess everyone says it's intimidating. Is it as intimidating as people? sake yeah I, I agree with that it's close to the pitch as well and it's it's a good atmosphere the the people are always behind the the team if the team puts in a lot of effort uh, the, the the people are st like standing up for the for the team they are supporting the team which is very important and it's a massive strength for 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 Luton and and I experience it myself now they can give us a boost of confidence a boost of yeah that we can can just make that extra step and um, yeah, it's it's you can feel the atmosphere. You you have to be on the pitch to experience it as well. But it's it's a massive part of of the club. We came into the championship the season before you arrived at Blackburn, and kind of progressed our way through. Did you, when you were playing against Luton, certainly in the last two seasons, did you think they're a club that can get promoted to the Premier League? Did, was our promotion sort of a surprise to you, or did you think, yeah, they they're good, they're good enough to go up? Well, actually, it wasn't really a surprise because over the years you've always done well. You've always done the right things as as a, as a club. Um, we've always struggled against Luton, so I could see that the strength of the team was enough to challenge for uh, to go up for for the playoffs, obviously. And I think every year you got better as well, uh, like in the league table. So I think it was actually a matter of time before before you got you got you got you could make that step. I think, and yeah. Also, the, the the type of players they attracted was always uh, on the right timing, on the right moment, and they don't they've done really well for the club. Did you happen to watch the playoff final last season against Coventry? I was following it because I was uh, aware a little bit of the interest, and obviously I was I was following it. Um, but yeah, I, obviously you watch these games because they are massive games. I think uh, I've watched so many playoff finals as well because they uh, they could give it on uh, television in Belgium um, so yeah I've, I've watched it and you'll have seen then sort of 30 odd thousand Luton fans behind that goal I mean it was just an incredible afternoon when that final penalty got missed and, and it sets us up for you know this season in the Premier League you mentioned there that you was aware of the interest I think Luton had been interested in you for a while before you signed uh, is that right? Well it was just uh, in case they got promoted that there was an opportunity for me to come to the club um, so that's why I was made aware of and obviously I was supporting Luton <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah how did it all come about then because um, obviously Rob only joined us halfway through last season um, when did he sort of get in contact with you and when did things really sort of, sort of progress towards you actually signing well it took actually a long long time um, I was I think it was after the season when I was in the national team that my agent got in, yeah, got in touch with the people in, at Luton, but we uh, didn't find an agreement with Blackburn at that time. It was a bit back and forth, and then it took a long time before I signed. But then actually, it went quick in in a couple of days. It went really quick, and then I think one week or two, yeah, one week and a half before the season uh, started, I I signed for Luton. 
Because I think the first time that Luton fans will have seen you in a Luton shirt will have been in Germany for the pre-season game against Bochum. And immediately there, it stood out that, you know, you're an excellent shot stopper and a real presence in the box, which is everything that Luton fans want in a goalkeeper. What, what, what was that experience like out in Germany? It was actually, yeah, it was actually good to be involved with the team. Uh, as we didn't have a lot of time to prepare, uh, but yeah, for me it was was really important to get to get into the team as fast as I could, and yeah, to adapt to the way we play and to adapt to the other guys. Uh, I could feel immediately that it was a good group, a tight group, which uh, was important for me as well to function as a player. I think it's it's for me I, I function better in a group where it's yeah, where there are nice guys and we are backing each other, and yeah, it was uh, it was really good for me. Did you overlap with Amari at Blackburn? Was he your teammate of yours? Yeah, but Belly was my teammate at um, at Blackburn. I I spoke to him a couple of times before I joined, and uh, yeah, he said he said really really good things about Luton, and that's what also made me, yeah, like I want to join. Uh, I want to join the club. Yeah, handy that you had someone that you already knew when you got in to sort of help you settle in, I suppose. Um, so then you become a Premier League player. Was that always a dream? Yeah, I think it's everyone's dream to to become a Premier League player, and I'm I'm always thankful and grateful for Luton to give me that opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's it's a childhood dream. It's the best nick in the world, and to compete at the highest level, it's uh, it's really nice. When you were in the dressing room at Brighton ahead of the first game of the season, did it feel different? Did it feel bigger? It felt bigger. Obviously, the the players were a different level. We had to adapt the first couple of games. Um, but yeah, I think if we are doing the right things, I think we can challenge everyone in the in the division. And yeah, okay, obviously you come against top top teams uh, where you have to uh, yeah be humble as well and 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 to to be to be yeah, to recognize that they are a better side than us. But within the qualities and the the players we have, we we can challenge. You was obviously an excellent goalkeeper when uh, you arrived. We knew that from your time at Blackburn playing against us. But do you think that you've improved as the season has gone on? Yeah, definitely. And it's it's a different way of play for me as well. A different way of uh, a league. Uh, the, the the type of play in, in the league is different as well. And I've I've improved to, uh, yeah, through the season. We we set a couple of targets with the with the goalkeeping coach, and uh, I'm trying to achieve them every day. Do you share with us what they are? No, it's very personal, but it's like technically in the goal and, and what, what I can improve. And uh, yeah, we have to be demanding of each other, which is which is very which is always good for for myself. And you can only get better as a goalkeeper. You ne- you're never too old to learn as well. I think watching us, the big difference between us, sort of towards the end of the championship and even the start of the Premier League season, and now. You have to do a lot more work with your feet, don't you? It's a much bigger part of the game. Beforehand, goalkeeper just hit it long to Carlton or hit it long to Eli. That's not the case now. You have to be a lot more sort of precise to the defenders and things. Is that something that come naturally or did you have to work on that? No, it's also, it's, it's bold actually because it's a different way of play. Uh, the patterns are different. You have to, uh, you have to, sometimes you have to feel where the player is going to come and where he's going to be, what kind of foot uh, you have to play it on. It's it has to come naturally and but you have to work on it as well obviously and yeah, to feel comfortable with each other receiving the ball in in tight areas probably and yeah, it's it's something that will grow and grow and grow cuz Luton fans we we're, we're still not used to that cuz we've come up through the leagues and stuff and it's it's not been like that do you hear the crowd like sort of getting a bit scared when the ball comes towards you and there's a player closing you down and things? You're very relaxed with it and it doesn't seem to phase you but do you hear the crowd like get a bit worried that the striker's closing you down yeah, some of us are here because we are we are tied closer to the pitch. But yeah, we 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 try to play, but we don't try to go away from what we are good at as well. Um, sometimes you have to go direct. Sometimes you have to play uh, the ball up front, and the manager makes it very clear: we're not playing or we're not passing it around just for passing it around. We want to arrive in the box. We want to be effective with it, and I think that's a good mindset to have. Yeah, it is, yeah. You mentioned earlier that we've kind of changed our style the longer the season's gone on and that's kind of left the defence a little bit more exposed, uh, which in turn has meant that you're an awful lot busier. So how has that kind of been to deal with? As a goalkeeper, you, it's easier to stay in the game when you have a lot to do, obviously. There were games that, yeah, it's it's sometimes we were open, but it's it's risk and reward a little bit and... I think, for example, against Brighton is the best example where it really, really worked. 
Um, but yeah, you, we have some, every team is different and you have to adapt to the team. Um, sometimes you're going to get exposed in the, in the Premier League. It's normal that you come up against, uh, you will see it on Saturday as well. You will come up against the best players in the, in the world. But yeah, it's, it's up to you to do, to make a, a, to give a solution to the team. For myself, I like to defend space which is the way the manager wants to play so it's not it's not that it's not it's not difficult to me to to defend that that area but yeah we have to be still disciplined and defending as a team yeah the one thing i've noticed you, you're very good on one on ones when the striker's bearing down on you is that something that you've had to practice or again is that something that just come naturally to you we had a couple of times against Notts Forest didn't we you saved from Morgan's Gibby White and there's a couple against sort of Manchester United that you, yeah. you cut the ball out and things like that is it natural or do you work do you work hard on it before I came to England it was uh, one of my working points um, to to yeah to improve that but yeah, obviously it worked out really well now and yeah, I just I just like to um yeah, it's 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 an important aspect of the game as a goalkeeper one v ones. And yeah, you have to defend space. I think the, the time of just standing on your line is a bit from old school, which I say I like old school, but you have to improve as well. And yeah, the the day of today everybody has to be or everybody wants a goalkeeper who plays high is good with his feet comes for crosses makes saves so basically they want all Alisson's and uh, Manuel Neuer so but you're trying your best and yeah it's, it's something that I like yeah Were they the kind of goalkeepers when you were coming over that you were watching an awful lot as sort of to, to aspire to? I, I always liked Peter Schmeichel uh, because he had a lot of presence in his uh, in his goal he, had, he was also very good 1v1 and he, he was one of my idols, obviously, uh, to, to watch. You've made lots of saves this season. You won the award for the Premier League Save of the Month in November for that brilliant double save against Crystal Palace. I think you should have won it for the Aston Villa away game as well, actually, because that double save was equally as good. Are there any particular saves that, maybe from a technical point of view and also from an importance of the match point of view, that you you pick out as the, like, the what, your favourite ones from the season so far? Uh, my favourite one, probably was the one against Kulisevsky to my right. Uh, funny enough, we did that save or that, that situation a lot of times before before the game. So it's always nice you can reproduce that in the game. The Watkins one, the Watkins ones was, was similar. We did that situation a couple of times in the training session, which is always nice to... You see the results on the, on the pitch. Um, the double save against Crystal Palace just in my mind, I know the goalkeeping coach Kev, he always says, ah, Thomas, don't admire your save, just stand up immediately. And that's what, what I did. And yeah, it, it, it's nice that things are working. Uh, we trust each other in that aspect and it's it's nice. One of my favourite saves was actually Crystal Palace away recently. The header from Mateta from about, what, four or five yards out. Obviously, it was a brilliant save at the time, but then we go and score up the other end and it kind of, had that gone in, 2-0, we were probably done, but it actually contributed towards earning us a point. So I thought that was a really, really big save. Yeah, the moment of the game was a, was a big moment. It's pure instinct that I could make a, a reflex on, on that one. And I was I remember Andros cutting inside and, and crossing the ball. I was like, oh God, please, please add it in or tap it in. But yeah, yeah it earned us a point and that's always nice to... Uh, to do these moments but yeah we need to pick up points as well we do uh let's just bring it um up to the sort of the rest of the season then we have got a few injuries but do you still believe over these nine games we've got enough within the the camp to to stay in this league i think we have to believe otherwise we we, we can give up now but we have to believe and yeah the players got us the the the, the core players who got us in the, into the premier league are still there so they it means they are good enough to do the job as well um obviously with the injuries it is a setback but it might we can't use that as an excuse excuse it's, we ha i believe that we have enough in the team to uh, to do the job it will probably come down to the last game of the season but yeah people here proved already to be good on the pressure so yeah just how important are the fans going to be over these last nine games we know that they'll be brilliant at kenworth road but in these big away games how important can they be uh, also, one game in my mind again, Everton away, where we where we got our first uh, win in in the Premier League, and it was yeah, it, it, 
you could feel the atmosphere you could feel the the joy from the from the from the fans the support is always there if we play away or, or at home the, the support is always there we know that and that we have to use that as a strength and yeah I can, I can feel their support I can feel that they give us a, a boost and I think it's just important for us and they started to sing your name as well every time that you come forward and give fans a clap it's old Thomas Kaminsky just how important is it that the fans have got your back I'm not gonna lie it's always a little bit of goosebumps a little bit yeah, it's, it's, it's nice um, but yeah, it's also I want to give them something back on the pitch, and uh, yeah, I'm trying my best every 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 game for that. And yeah, if the support is both ways actually. I think we most had your back at Burnley. You were getting a bit of stick that night, and uh, I think one of my favourite moments from you this season because obviously their goalkeeper was playing up a little bit, wasn't he? Catching the ball and falling flat on his face, and the one chance that you got to do it straight after the equaliser, you did the same thing, and I just love that bit about you. It was brilliant. It actually, it wasn't on purpose. Oh. It was, uh, and I, I, I think somebody shouted at me, "Go down, go down!" So that's why I went down as well. I think it might be, might have been Ross. We said, "Yeah, just go down," because it was last uh, one of the last minutes, and yeah, yeah, it's part of the game, you know. Yeah, we were getting annoyed by their goalkeeper doing it. So it was just fantastic that once we'd equalised that you'd done it. So let's fast forward then. Nine games, Luton have done enough. We've stayed in the Premier League. We're ready for another season in the Premier League. And then your attention turns to going to Germany with Belgium for the Euro squad. I think with Thibaut Courtois going to be out, it, you're pretty much a certainty to be in the squad, touch wood and everything. Just how much are you looking forward to being part of a major championship? Um, It's going to be... My first time to be part in, no, it's actually the second time, but um, the first time was only uh, one game that I had to replace uh, uh, Mignolet. But it's going to be uh, important for us. We have a new group, we have a lot of new players, young players. And yeah, you never know what might happen. But yeah, we, we, are, we are looking forward to it. And hopefully he gets fit and uh, Sambi can join you in that squad and uh, Luton fans can watch both of you uh, in the Euros. Thomas has been great. I've taken up far too much of your time already. So I really, really um, appreciate that. All the best for the last nine games. You know we'll be right behind you. We know you'll give absolutely everything that you've got. And all the best for the Euros. I'm really looking forward to watching you in that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. This, this tech, you know what I love about this town is actually you. Everyone in it has got this massive soul. We're looking people, and that's what we care about.